To run a CASP reaction, the CASP assay mix, the CASP master mix, and the DNA sample containing the target SNP are combined in a single tube or well. Once all the reaction components have been combined and the tube is securely sealed, the CASP thermal cycling protocol is then run. The first stage of the protocol requires hot start activation of the CASP TAC. This removes the chemical inactivation from the CASP TAC, leaving the enzyme active for the CASP reaction. The majority of CASP genotyping is performed on organisms with genomes containing two or more copies of the target sequence. For example, diploid organisms such as humans, zebrafish, and tomatoes will have two copies of most chromosomes. In this example, the DNA sample is homozygous for the allele A, which means that both chromosomes contain the A allele in the target sequence. The first step of the CASP reaction is denaturation of the DNA template. The second step of the CASP reaction includes both the annealing and the extension of the primers. The CASP reaction will contain the two allele-specific primers that compete with each other during the PCR that bind to the template DNA. The target-specific part of these primers is complementary to the template DNA. The base difference at the 3' end corresponds to the SNP target, and it is this difference that drives the competitive PCR. Both primers have the potential to anneal to the template DNA but the primer that does not contain the correct base, that if 3' prime end, will be outcompeted by the allele-specific primer that is 100% complementary to the template DNA. On rare occasions, the allele-specific primer, which is not 100% complementary to the template DNA, may anneal. If this happens, a specially modified CASP TAC present in the CASP master mix prevents extension. During this stage of the PCR, the common reverse primer will also bind to the template DNA. After the complementary primers have annealed to the template DNA, the CASP TAC will begin to extend. At the end of the CASP PCR round 1, the region of template DNA containing the target SNP will have been copied. The tail sequence that is part of the allele-specific primer will not have been copied, but will have become incorporated into the PCR product. This animation will now focus on the PCR product that has allele-specific tail sequence incorporated within it. CAS PCR round two starts with the denaturation of double-stranded DNA. This DNA consists of both the original DNA template and the PCR products generated during PCR round one. As with PCR round 1, step 2 includes both annealing and extension of the primers. It's during the second round of PCR that the complementary sequence to the allele-specific tail sequence is first generated. This will be referred to as the X complement. CASP PCR round 3 again starts with the denaturation of the double-stranded DNA. This DNA consists of both the original DNA template and PCR products generated during PCR rounds 1 and 2. This animation will first focus on the PCR product that has both the allele-specific tail sequences and its complementary sequence incorporated within it. During the annealing step, the presence of the X complement allows the FAM-labeled oligonucleotide from the reporter cassette to bind and extend. It's important to note that whilst this is happening, the original DNA template and other PCR products will be denatured and extended. This is crucial as it results in a continually increasing number of PCR products containing the X complement. These PCR products will enable an increasing proportion of the FAM labeled oligonucleotide from the report to the cassette to bind and extend during subsequent rounds of PCR. As the PCR progresses with further rounds of denaturation, annealing, and an extension, the number of PCR products increases exponentially. This results in a greater and greater amount of FAM-labeled oligos becoming incorporated and subsequently less is quenched in the reporter cassette. CASP is an endpoint genotyping chemistry and should therefore only be read once the PCR reaction is completed. 
Depending on the alleles that are present in the original DNA template, either the FAM-labeled oligo, the HEX-labeled oligo, or both would have been incorporated into the PCR product. In this example, the DNA template was homozygous for the allele A, and therefore only the FAM-labeled oligo has been incorporated. Before reading the fluorescence, completed cast reactions must be cooled to below 40 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, any of the fluorescently labeled oligos that have not been incorporated will be quenched and will therefore not emit fluorescence. The fluorescently labeled oligos, in this case FAM, have been incorporated into the PCR products, are no longer quenched, and will therefore emit fluorescence. The fluorescence from the completed reaction is now measured and this completes the cast genotyping reaction for this DNA sample. In the previous example, the template DNA used in the reaction was homozygous for the allele A, which is reported by the FAM fluorophore. The next animation will show how the fluorescence generated from the computed CASP reaction will differ if the template DNA is homozygous for the allele C. In this case, the presence of an allele C in the original DNA template has resulted in the hex-labeled oligos being incorporated into the PCR product. This fluorophore is no longer quenched and will therefore emit fluorescence. The fluorescence from the completed reaction is now measured, and this completes the CASP genotyping reaction for this DNA sample. If the template DNA is heterozygous, it will contain both the A and C alleles. This will result in both FAM and HEX signals being generated in the completed CASP reaction. This is shown in the next animation. In this heterozygous example, the presence of both A and C alleles has resulted in both the FAM and HEX labeled oligos being incorporated into the PCR product. Both fluorophores are no longer quenched and both will therefore emit fluorescence. The fluorescence from the completed reaction is now measured and this completes the CASP genotyping reaction for this DNA sample. The final video in this series will describe how the fluorescence produced by CASP reactions is interpreted to allow the genotypes of the DNA samples to be determined.